Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about encodings, specifically the UTF family of encodings 8, 16, and 32. And with respect to those, we'll also be talking about what the BOM or the byte order marker is. Uh, but first, we're going to do a little refresher of what UTF-8 is because it helps us frame this discussion. Uh, for that, I'm going to be opening up Python and we are going to look at the binary representation of UTF-8. Uh, to do that, I am going to do this. Join bin C or C in. Get ourselves the little snowman. Uh, and I did Control Shift U if you're on Linux and want to follow along there. I think it's specifically an X thing. Uh, so this is the binary representation of the snowman. And basically the way UTF-8 works is it's a variable length encoding where it uses one byte chunks as its variable. And the first byte in any code point sequence will be controlled by the first n number of bits uh, in a uh, sort of <laughs> smaller code point but not ASCII code point, such as the snowman, 2603. Uh, the first four bits of the first byte are going to be 1110. This tells it there will be, I think it tells it that there will be three bytes to represent this character. Uh, whereas if we have, you know, like an ASCII character such as A, the first byte, well, the first bit is zero, but you can't see it here because it doesn't show it here, but just trust me, there's a zero here. Uh, the next bytes in the multibyte encoding will have one zero as their first bit, sort of wasting these bits, but it's fine. You know, it's, it's compact enough, so it, it does what it needs to do. Um, basically taking the lower six bits, uh, and then that represents the particular code point. For longer characters, such as 10643, our upside down smiley face here, uh, we're gonna end up with four bytes in our variable encoding. So there's there's kind of a, a, you know, a different number of bytes that can represent each code point in UTF-8. Uh, but it uses one byte chunks as its encoding. UTF-16 works similarly, except it uses two byte chunks in its encoding. Uh, and there are actually two flavors of UTF-16. There's a big Indian and a little Indian format. Uh, there's some history here about the, the popularity of Indianness and processor architectures and other stuff like that. Um, but the rule of thumb that I think about is that Windows tends to be little Indian and nothing tends to use big Indian. It's not exactly true, but it's how I think about it. Uh, and so if we look at this in UTF-16 little endian, uh, unknown encoding, oh, it's UTF-16 LE. Yeah, there we go. Or big endian. Um, I'm, I'm much less familiar with the uh, UTF-16 format, so I can't really explain how this one works. Uh, but if we look at it uh, with this character, this is snowman, um, just, just to show that. Encode UTF 16 LE. I'll just show you what I've observed here. You'll notice that the big Indian and little Indian format changes the byte order in the encoded output. Now byte order might hint to you at what a byte order marker is, um, but we'll get to that in a sec. Um, but note that they're in you know a different order here. There is also UTF 32, uh, which I guess defaults to one of the Indiannesses. I don't remember which. Uh, but UTF-32 is a four-byte four chunk uh, with the kind of intention that it should be able to encode code points in one chunk directly. However, it looks like it looks like we ended up uh, with eight bytes here for Snowman. So. Oh, right, because there's a byte order marker here. <laughs> ah, the video that we're talking about today. Ah, what is this weird character here? Because this is the actual 2603 right here with two uh, null bytes padding. Um, but you'll see if I specify a big ending or little ending, I'm going to get four bytes. If I don't specify it at all, it's going to pick one of the two. I'm not sure which, and then give us a, a byte order marker. I could figure it out by looking at it, but... Um, basically, UTF-32 also deals with a byte order. You'll notice that we didn't talk about byte order for UTF-8, and that's because there's, there isn't one. Um, however, there is a byte order marker for UTF-8, which makes no sense because it's a single byte encoding, so there is no order to it, but there is a byte order marker anyway. Um, okay, but yeah, that's those. Uh, 
I don't... Does UTF-16 have a default also? It probably defaults... Uh... It looks like it defaults to Little Endian? Yeah, it's Little Endian with a byte order marker. Uh, does 16... Does 32... You know what? I'm, I'm invested. We're gonna look at it now. Uh... It looks like UTF-32 and Python defaults to Little Endian as well. Um, I read somewhere in a spec that the spec actually recommends defaulting to Big Endian, so Python diverges from that, but anyway. Okay, so byte order markers. The whole point of this video. Uh, a byte order marker is a chunk of bytes, usually at the beginning of a file, which tells you what byte order something is in. Uh, however, my recommendation is don't use UTF-16 or UTF-32 when writing files, and then you don't have to think about this. Uh, UTF-8 is almost always, I think actually always, going to be a more compact representation of your text, and there are modern libraries that make it just about as fast as reading uh, UTF-32, where you can consider code points to be a fixed width offset. Um, you don't have to do any variable decoding for UTF-32 because all of the currently known code points fit directly into it. Of course, characters can span more than one code point, which with combining characters and other uh, you know, flags are one of the ones that are multi-code point as well. Um, but you can index code points directly in UTF-32. Um, but that brings us to byte order markers. So how do you end up with them in the first place? So usually you end up with them by someone on Windows using a Windows text editor and committing in UTF-8 because Windows will default to adding a, well, many programs on Windows will default to adding a byte order marker because it was necessary when working in UTF-16, which was the default Unicode encoding for Windows Unicode. Such a bad name. Um, a UTF family of encoding, we'll put it that way. To end up with them, if you need them for like a test or something, you can copy and paste the bytes for them. Uh, you can get them out of the codex module. Codex dot, uh, where is the constant? Yeah, you can get the, oh, what is, is there a UTF 64? <laughs> what is bomb 64? I don't know what that is. I didn't know there was a, no, it doesn't appear to be a UTF-64. I don't know what this one is. But anyway, there are byte order markers for uh, the various encodings here. Or the way that I usually do it is by writing a file uh, in write mode with encoding equals. And you can use UTF, whatever your encoding is, like UTF-16 LE, I think it's dash sig. Uh, and if we write this here. Unknown encoding. Uh, oh, maybe it just does it automatically because it has to. We'll find out. I thought it was uh, SIG because that's how it works for UTF-8. Oh, right. UTF-16LE-SIG. Let's try that. We'll get it right one of these times. Dang, really? Yay. Yeah, sometimes these live demos don't go as planned. Okay. It wrote one, <laughs> one, surely didn't write one byte. That must be one character. Uh, so it probably did not encode this. Uh, if... Yeah, you'll see we did not get a byte order marker here. Anyway, I'll show it for UTF-8 since I know what that one is. <laughs> With open F write mode, encoding equals UTF-8 dash sig. F dot right foo. Uh, actually, we'll put a snowman in here as well so that we get the actual interesting bytes in this. Really? Why? Why? Oh, I'm going to have to edit this in, aren't I? <laughs> I thought it was UTF 8 sig. Oh, there we go. It's UTF 8, UTF dash 8 dash sig. Uh, and then if we hg-cf, look at the hex dump, you'll see that we end up with these three bytes here, efbbbf, which is our uh, byte order marker. But again, it's useless in UTF-8, so you should probably not do this and instead remove it. Uh, one way that you can remove this is by setting up a pre-commit hook. This is pre-commit pre hooks, a thing that I made. And there is a byte order marker fixer, which just removes the UTF-8 byte order marker. Since it's... Not needed, and uh, some things handle it poorly, and 
know, you can mess up the first line of data in a CSV if you read it with UTF-8 instead of UTF-8 SIG. Uh, there's all sorts of annoying things that can happen with this, this weird little byte order marker character that you don't need. That's the important part. You don't need it. Uh, you do probably need it if you're using UTF-16, or you can just assume that it's Little Indian uh, without regards to the standards. Um, but my rec my recommendation is always use UTF-8. Don't use a byte order marker. Use a thing to prevent your byte order marker if you think that you might have people contributing on Windows where it might sneak in like this. Uh, but anyway, that's byte order marker. I don't know why I couldn't find the, the UTF-16 equivalent of it, but that's the way things go. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.